Do you want to build a snowman? How about several? I just got the most adorable die set, and today I'm sharing four ways to use it beyond how it was intended. This is the Cool Crew die set from Tailored Expressions. It cuts a row of four snowmen plus loads of accessories, so you can customize it however you want. The little four snowman row folds back and forth so it can stand up as a little card or like a place card or a decor item on your mantle. The dies came all together and I was hoping I could leave them like that so I wouldn't lose any of them, but they don't all fit on my Gemini sandwich. They would fit on a larger die cutting machine though. I cut the snowman away from all the accessories and I cut away this other little backer snowman because I'll likely cut it from black cardstock most of the time, although I do have some other ideas for him as well. So to start, I cut one row of the snowmen. You can get three rows cut from a sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch cardstock. Cut them down to about 3.5 inches by 8.5 inches wide. This die cuts all the eyes and buttons from the snowmen, and it scores lines between them so it's easy to fold them up so that they can stand up on their own. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is build a longer row of snowmen, not just four. I've cut two of the snowman rows from white, and eight of that smaller backer snowman from black. All you do is line up the black snowman on the back of the white snowman. There's a flat edge at the bottom to make this easy, and then you glue it in place and all your eyes and buttons are done. Oh, here's another option. You could make a two-sided row of snowmen by sandwiching the black between two rows of white. And here's three cuttings of all the accessories. There's a couple of different hats with trim and pom-poms, a top hat and some earmuffs, carrots for noses, bow ties, one little piece that I haven't figured out yet, and two layers for the scarves. Okay, let's build this thing. I'm gluing the black backers with tape runner, and I'm making sure that I don't have glue on the area behind the eyes, but that I do have glue on the area behind the buttons. I'll come back to that in a minute. I worked my way along all four in the first row, and that flat bottom helps make it quite easy to line them up. To extend my row, I overlapped the last snowman from the first row, with the first snowman from the second row, and now I've got an even longer accordion. Then I continued adding the black backers to the rest of the snowmen. I added another one to the overlapping snowman just so that if anyone sees the back, they'll all look alike. And then I finished the rest. Now for the fun part. I've already ink blended and glued together a hat for each of these guys, and of course I did it in rainbow order. There are four hats, and just by tilting them differently, you can get a different look. I use solid colors, but you could use pattern paper or any background paper you've already created. See the two scarves? I did one with the colored layer over white and one with white over a colored layer, so even that can get different looks. Heading back to the buttons, I had kept all the white eyes and buttons from the die cut snowman, and I colored them with markers to match their hats, and I popped them in. Remember that I had that glue showing through on the black backers, but you could also add tiny drops of liquid glue to do this if you find that easier. I added some shine to their eyes with a white gel pen, and then I added some sparkle with some crystal stickles glitter glue on the white pieces of their headgear. As I said, you could fold these up to be a fun little accordion type card, or you could just display them somewhere. These guys are super cute. Now what about that backer snowman? He's a slightly different shape, but the nice thing about him is he's fully round on the bottom. The ones in the rows have flat sides, and we'll talk about that in a minute. It's easy to add the face and buttons by putting him into the die, taping him in place, and running him through a die cutting machine. Put him over a black backer, and you've got the eyes and buttons again. Some of the accessories might not be the right proportion for him, but some of them will work. Here's the top hat, the bow tie, and the carrot nose. So don't forget that this is another option. I made this video to go along with a blog hop that's happening. If you head to my blog using the link below, you'll be able to see all the giveaway information and the list of all the blogs in the hop. Okay, so let's look at how you can use these snowmen on cards. First, I'm gonna create a quick background. These days I'm finding that gel printing with ink is much faster than ink blending and generally just as effective. I've got Cummerbunded Serenade here and I put them down in rows, used my brayer and moved it slightly back and forth to help blend them and then I pulled the print on some lightweight white cardstock. Next, I cut it down so that I could stencil two layers of ink on top of it, using the Sweater Weather stencil from Simon Hurley. This is a single layer stencil, but it's designed to create a really pretty pattern when you shift it. Because of the tone and tone background, I did have a little trouble getting the pattern lined up properly, but you'll see that it still turned out really pretty. 
getting a frozen vibe here. I splattered some water over top to activate the ink and then picked it up with a microfiber cloth and this gave me the look of snow in the background. Next, I lined up my snowman on my panel in my Misty to help position my sentiment. Notice that this snowman was cut from one end of the row. He has one round side and one flat side where the score line is, so I'm positioning him on the right edge. I grabbed a Christmas sentiment set from Avery L, and I stamped it with black ink using my mini Misty and stamping it several times to get a crisp, dark impression that would stand out from the background. I adhered my snowman to the card and put on his hat, added the trim, and then used a big fluffy pom-pom that's actually meant to go with the other hat. So that's one snowman. Next, I wanted to try a card with two of those sitting under some mistletoe. I got out my mistletoe creating quad stencil set. This is a really neat set that allows you to use a full page of cardstock to create four backgrounds all at once. But did you know you can also pick and choose just one if you want? I want the one that's hanging down in the center. I want to have the stencil up in the top corner so that it'll be easy to line up the layers, so I played around positioning my cardstock until I had it where I wanted it. Then I blended Lime Ricky ink through the first layer. Now the tricky part is figuring out which corner of each layer of the stencil is the right one and getting it into the corner so that it lines up correctly. The alignment holes really help. I made a note in my mind of where it was so I knew it had to be in the same place for all four layers. I did grey inks for the berries to give the look of white mistletoe berries and I'll add some red to my card later. But to make the berries a little special, I grabbed my Nouveau Crystal Glaze and I put a little dot of it on each berry. This adds some dimension and shine, but I'm taking it a step further by sprinkling over some chunky iridescent glitter. Not too much, I just want a few little pieces on each berry to catch the light. I set that aside to dry. To add a green mat to my card base, I masked off the back half and then I went direct to paper with grass skirt ink. This is the darker green shade that I used on the second layer of the mistletoe leaves. I just did the outside edges. The center will be covered by my mistletoe panel. And here are my two snow people. Notice that they both have one round side, which I put on the corresponding outside edge, and then one flat side. I overlap them a little bit. They're clearly about to kiss. Looking at it, I thought my scene would benefit from a little more contrast, so I blended some cummerbund ink on the bottom of the mistletoe panel, letting it fade out as it came to the top. I used my white gel pen to add some little details around the card, especially to that solid scarf and hat on the right-hand snowman. For my last project, I made a snowman tag. I cut the two snowmen off the ends of the row, leaving me with the two in the center. They have flat edges on both sides and they match up perfectly. I cut two backer snowmen from white cardstock and I put them both on the inside of the tag. The one behind the front will give a base for the eyes and buttons and the one on the back will be the place to write. I used some markers to color the eyes black and then three of the buttons red using the offcuts from the original row of snowmen. Then I grabbed the two layers for the scarf and the earmuffs and I colored them red. I colored the nose orange and then I put green on the band between the earmuffs. Later on I colored the back of the earmuffs since they were visible, but you should really do it now before everything's glued in place. I just didn't realize that I needed to do that at this point. I glued all the accessories to the snowman using liquid glue and when I turned it over that's when I realized I needed to color the back of the earmuffs as well. I stamped a no peeking sentiment on the inside of the tag and there's still plenty of room for you to write a message. You can glue this to a package or you could string some twine or ribbon through the earmuffs if you wanted to attach it to the gift that way. I love Christmas in July. It's a great way to get a head start on holiday projects. And even as I watched this video back, I was thinking of even more ways to use this set. These adorable snowmen are classic and so easy to customize for all your Christmas projects. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.